Hi everyone, in this uh, new episode of the IoT Show, we will show you the latest and greatest features in the Azure IoT extension uh, in VS Code. So basically you'll be able to see um, what you can do in terms of developing for devices and interacting with Azure IoT Hub and I have Leah Du from the DevDiv China team here for me to show us all of that. Thanks for watching the uh, IoT Show. I'm Olivier, your host. Uh, today I have Leah. You with me? Hey, hey. Leah, how are you doing? I'm good. Thanks so, for having me again. Of course. So Leah is coming from China. is part of the DevDiv China team working on, on tooling for IoT. And today he is here to tell us and show us a bit about the latest and greatest features in the uh, IoT Toolkit extension for VS Code, right? Yes, of course. So tell me a bit about uh, where we uh, we are at in terms of the tooling, in terms of the experience for developers in VS Code right now. Okay, so basically uh, I'm working for the IoT tooling. Yep. So we have a set of tooling that covers both Visual Studio Code and Visual Studio. Okay. Uh, basically we're targeting on like very professional IoT developers and a system to build IoT solutions end to end. And we have a set of utilities like this one, the Azure IoT Toolkit, okay. which helps the professional developers to easily manage their resource on Azure IoT Hub and mm -hmm. devices, stuff like that. So basically it's like Microsoft grade enterprise quality tooling for IoT developers. It's not just about like, hey, connecting to a device no. and doing Blinky on it. It's really about no. integration of development processes, workflows, and so on. Into, exactly. Into it's tools. really about your service developing our like a full-fledged IoT solution. Yeah. And we just covered uh, lots of like details and functionalities in for building that IoT solution. Yep. And and because actually IoT developers are particular, they do work with hardware, devices, connectivity issues, and they have to interact with the cloud services. And so what you're going to show us today is the latest and greatest integration into the uh, the, uh, the extension is used to work with Azure IoT Hub, which is our core platform service for IoT. Right. Uh, and you're going to tell us about some of, some of these key scenarios that developers are going through and using the tools for. Yeah, definitely. Well, let's get to it, right? Yeah, sure, let's do that. Okay. Okay, so here is actually our marketplace page for the Azure IoT Toolkit, mm -hmm. and you can see all the features listed here okay. and with some simple tutorials. But of course, we just uh, um, bumped our new vision and comes with our new designed welcome page. Okay. So as you can see on the welcome page, you can do a couple of things that you to help you quickly start it. Uh, so if you don't have like an IoT Hub, if you have some IoT Hub already been created in the Azure yeah. portal, you can just fairly easily to select that IoT Hub within this welcome page okay. to get started. Okay. And of course, you can start from here and uh, using other like fun uh, functions and features come with this one. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really handy. Okay. And so uh, there's a dependency mm -hmm. to the Azure login extension, right? So basically, you have to be logged in into Azure uh, portal yeah. um, in VS Code with that extension. Yes. So that way you can access your resources. Yes, yes. And the needs that we're relying on the Azure account extension oh, to do the Azure account. login. Yep, yep. Yeah, so because it's a, it's a hard dependency of that, so we just leverage on that. Okay. 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 Makes sense. Yeah, so if you want to further some instructions, you can just expand this area to get some nicely done, like a GIF or screenshots. Nice. So you are, you are get to know what you're doing yeah. for this one. And you can stay in your tool. Like you have all the instructions in there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The benefits okay. here is you don't ha even have to leave this Visual Studio code to mm -hmm. do all the tasks that okay. you want to operate on your Azure IoT Hub. Makes sense. Makes sense. Okay, so you, you get in there, you create an IT hub or use an existing one, you hook up to it. So basically then your tooling is linked with that specific instance of IT Hub. Exactly. Correct? So here, actually, I've already setting up an Azure IoT Hub, and okay. I've already logged into my Azure account. Mm -hmm. And you can see on the left-hand panel, so here, I've already created like two devices within my uh, Azure IoT Hub. Okay. Yeah. So let's say that we are now into the stage. I've already have Azure, Azure IoT Hub. Okay. I want to just have quickly testing, you know, by sending some message to make sure uh, my like I want to simulate some device so that okay. the Azure IoT Hub can just receive that message from it, right? Okay. So which is pretty handy that you can just do directly within the Visual Studio Code. Okay. Yeah, let me just show you to Let's do this. Let's see how fast you can do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so first of all is like you can just uh, uh, type the command IoT okay. Hub, and you can see we have all kinds of quick like commands to mm -hmm. assist you to different tasks. Yeah. Here I'm going to select the um, generate code. Okay. And I'm going to select um, this AZ uh, 3166 okay. as my device. 
And I have different languages supported for generation code, but okay. I'm choosing the simplest one. I just want to send HTTP code to this. Okay. I don't want to start to writing my code. I just want to ping IoT Hub, see everything is working. Okay. Know? So basically, we have an IoT app that is behind IoT Hub, where you just want to see if IoT Hub even receives a message. Right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Makes sense. That's the purpose. That's the basics. Okay. okay. I want to send the device to cloud message, of okay. course. And it what generates just cur x like method for you. Okay. And together with the access token by default that come with it. Okay. Yeah. But definitely uh, sometimes you want to have a longer term of the access token. Okay. But because uh, for us, Azure, Azure IoT, we're really ser about, serious about the security. Mm -hmm. That's why for every message that you send from the device to cloud, yeah. you have to come along with the, the security token with it. Yep. Yeah. So that's actually, if you want to customize this SS token, you can also do that directly with it. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Um, let's say I want to uh, change my SAS token. Yeah. So by default, um, the, the time span, the exper mm -hmm. exper uh, uh, the expiration, expiration time. time. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm still <laughs> okay. local Chinese. I have, uh, I have problems with that word. Okay, as well. <laughs> the expiration time will be set to one hour by default, but you can just uh, reset it by generating okay. another SAS token. Mm -hmm. And once again, like you were saying, like security-wise, you want to be careful not to have an expiration token that is too long. Yes. Otherwise, you might have like you know spoofing of that token and someone impersonate the device. You don't want that to happen. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. I'm also going to generate another one. So here you can just set the okay. expiration times. Um, let me just do that. I want to set a longer time, like two hours. Yeah, because you're a developer. You need yeah. the comfort not having to go and update that's that right. one. That's sense. right. Yep. Yeah, and uh, actually, it will already you know, copy to my keyboard. I can uh -huh. just uh, replace this um, share access token over here. OK. Let me just quickly do that. Yeah, okay. here we go. We have Good. a new one. And to test that, let me just uh, launch into a very common utility called Postman. Yeah. Just like post a simple HTTP request. Yes, exactly. So I'm going to import that core command into yeah. it. Right, I can just send it. Okay. Uh, before I'm sending it, so actually you want to monitoring that the message has actually be received by IoT mm -hmm. Hub, right? Mm -hmm. So a very handy way is like you can also do that by using this toolkit okay. to monitoring the C2D or D2D uh, D2C message. Okay. Okay. Let me just uh, quickly do that. I'm going to select this one. I'm going to say I want to start monitoring device to cloud message. Yeah, for this specific device. For this specific device. Got it. Now you can see from this one, it start to you know. Mm -hmm. Monitoring the message, right? Yep. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this code command. Okay. I'm going to send this to IoT Hub and just wait a few seconds. And you can see. And so this message has yep. been received, it's right? Faster than you. So I probably want to, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty quick, actually. It's and uh, in a secure right? way, yeah. right? Of course. That's okay. the thing we need to guarantee. Okay. And uh, just to change, to make sure I'm not cheating, it's like I want <laughs> to put some other words. Yes. Um, come to ignite, because it's coming. <laughs> yes, week. exactly. Yeah. Make sure you don't miss that. OK. I'm going to send this again. And. You can see well, the message has been received by awesome. the Azure IoT Hub. Okay. So that's just a really quick and handy way you send an HTTP request mm -hmm. to the Azure IoT Hub. You can just monitor that directly within Visual Studio Code. Yeah, and you can use Postman to actually like tweak the message and really validate that that body of the message to send is received and you yep. can do something of it. Okay, yep. Yep. cool. Super simple, super straightforward, everything yep. in VS Code. Um, but you have a couple more scenarios to show me, right? Oh, of course. Yes. So this one is just the simplest one. Yep. Let's say up to a stage I want to create my own application. Mm -hmm. So I want to use my preferred language. Uh, I personally like Node.js a lot. Okay. Okay. So right now I can use the code generation functionality, which already be embedded in this mm -hmm. toolkit, mm -hmm. to help me to generate this boiler code. Okay. So I can start to reuse a code for my own application. Okay. So yeah, basically have the the blink of the hello world for IoT device code yes. to connect to IoT Hub yeah. and do something, right? Yeah, and okay. more than that, it essentially helps you to generate some simple device code, so mm -hmm. it actually mimics like a simulated device. Okay. You can just send like the, you know, fake the temperature and humidity yep. information, like normally you just want to send via telemetry data mm -hmm. into the IoT Hub to yep, the cloud. Yep, yep. 
all within this without even necessary okay. to have a physical device. Okay, okay let's do that. Um, so here I'm also going to still use a command. Yep. Let me just uh, use the command so generate, generate code. code. Nice. Yeah, and the same device I'm going okay. to use. And here I'm going to have all kinds of different languages at developer's preference mm -hmm. to choose from. Okay. Uh, I'm going to select the Node.js. Okay, and it's going to use. Is it going to use the the SDKs for yes. that device? Okay. Yes, exactly. And it's going to use a Node.js Node.js SDK to okay. to do that. Got it. And I want to send device cloud command. Okay. Right. It and populates with a connection string for your development. Yeah. It yeah. So yeah. all the necessary yeah. configuration has already been filled by for you okay. within this boilerplate code. You mm -hmm. can see the connection string here, and so the. The library that uh, you are working for, the uh, Azure, the device yeah, SDK yeah. library, has already been loaded up. Okay. And here, actually, uh, the code just mimics like you have like two sensors: one temperature sensor, another one hum humidity sensor, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just to keep omitting the message sent to the Got Azure LT Hub. Got it. Yeah, okay. Makes sense. Yeah. And I'm going to just run this code. Let me just choose. Yeah. I think customize the code. Yeah. And I'm going to run that. Easy. Yeah. It also leverages in VS Code all the support for all these languages, right? In terms of IntelliSense, uh, color highlighting, and so on. So basically, because you are in that IDE, yes. you get all of that goodness, goodness for free as well. Yes. Yes. Awesome. The good thing is mm. still like we want to concentrate your actually implementing your logic within the development yeah, yeah. environment mm -hmm. without being bothering like okay. configurations and the jump between like windows stuff like that okay or you want to focus on is your business logic okay yeah and you can see from the upper window so we've already started to sending the you know the random mm -hmm. temperature and humidity message okay. onto that let me just show uh, it has been received to the Azure OT hub okay so I'm going to first stop to monitoring I'm going to like Start the monitoring for this specific device again. So you saw that the device was sending messages, yep. and now you're looking at is is my message arriving? There you go. Yeah. Boom. Here we go. Right. Yeah. So awesome. there's a message that had been sent to it. Mm -hmm. I can also customize my message sent to the IoT Hub. Yeah. So if there's a the, the temperature has crossed some threshold. Yeah. So there will be like our, our status say the temperature alert is true. Awesome. Right? So yeah, so basically now you, you have this opportunity of like really rapidly generating that hello world code within VS Code again. Yeah. You're there, like like the wizard, right? We have yeah. we're used to in, in Visual Studio. Yeah. Create a new project, type, yeah. select the language, and boom, you have yeah. it. Yeah. Awesome. It was <laughs> By the help with other extensions, for example, the Node.js was natively supported in the yeah. Visual Studio Code. Yep. If you have like C Sharp code, mm -hmm. so you will be helped a lot by installing the C Sharp extension as well. Okay. So that you have the native like IntelliSense and debugging feature, like Sense. like just write normally write your C Sharp yep. code. Yep, awesome. Yeah, cool. So you had the last one, right? Yes. Let's show me the last one, last scenario that that you have in mind. So you basically, you know, actually, you were you were you are all the way through, you know, the the, the basic scenarios, right? We have more scenarios uh, that that we can cover, obviously, with that. Um, we will talk about that in other episodes. But the notion of CI, CD, and so on is something that's important for developers as well. Mm -hmm. And so they also the notion of support for Visual Studio that that people are expecting. Yeah. Um, but I think I think here you you're delivering like the key and the basics for developing. Uh, you know, in an enterprise project for IoT, which is awesome. One thing that actually um, I wanted to have you share is, can people contribute and work with you on that extension for Azure IoT? Yes, of course. So actually, every source code for this extension will be published to the GitHub. Yeah. So we are very welcome that you just contribute in your code and uh -huh. uh, send us your feature requests and bugs and so on. So okay. everything right now is on the GitHub. You can just access from okay. this Visual Studio Code, Azure IoT Toolkit repository, and uh, send us the message within the GitHub. Okay. And uh, we will see you there. Awesome, cool. And we'll add the links for accessing the extension and the GitHub repo. Uh, people should actually go there and get it today, yes. right? Yes. And well, people, thanks for watching the IoT show. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, come back for more news about developer experience for IoT. Mm -hmm.